Good morning. This is week four of the Cultural Geography of the United Kingdom and today we are starting a set of uh, altogether five classes in which we will talk about the different parts of, uh, of this country. First, for three weeks, we'll talk about the counties of England and uh, uh, then we will continue uh, to talk about the uh, uh, geographical division of uh, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. So um, today we start uh, the discussion of the counties of England. We will talk about the south eastern part. As you can see on the map here, um, the uh, entire land of England uh, can be divided into smaller parts, uh, mostly in the uh, south, in the middle and in the north. Uh, if we want to divide it further still, uh, we have uh, uh, the areas uh, in the south uh, called southwest, southeast and the east of England. Uh, then two parts in the Midlands, West Midlands and East Midlands and three parts in the North. North West, North East and Yorkshire and the Humber. And uh, uh, we are going to talk about these places uh, from the uh, geographical and cultural perspective over the next three uh, weeks. And today we'll talk about uh, the uh, South eastern part and the part called the east of England. So these are the, uh, the counties that basically surround London. Uh, I will be using contemporary uh, modern uh, division into counties. There are other historical divisions. We'll probably talk about them a little bit uh, at the end, but uh, uh, I think we'll return to historical uh, division of, uh, of the United Kingdom and, uh, and historical maps uh, at a later stage, because today, after we finish this part, I would like to add something else. Namely, I would like to talk uh, about uh, place names, uh, the toponyms, so uh, how uh, those uh, cities and towns and villages got the names and uh, the linguistic evidence uh, of uh, of the changing uh, of the changing reality. So let's start with the south east of England. So the uh, the counties uh, to the south and also to the west of Greater London. We have covered Greater London already. I hope you are familiar with London boroughs by now because there is a new thing coming uh, that is the counties of England. And uh, I will expect you to learn the map. I will expect you to be able to locate those, um, those uh, um, places and uh, their names on the map. This is something that will be uh, required at the end of this course. Uh, we will talk um, about some possible... Um, mostly uh, there is an application that will help you learn this if you, uh, if you wish. We'll talk about it uh, during the live meeting so that don't get too discouraged. I could learn it, you could learn it. It's nothing, uh, nothing uh, too difficult, just a couple of geographical names. And uh, here we have like the first list of those uh, South East England uh, um, counties, Kent, Surrey, Sussex, divided into East and West, the Isle of Wight, Hampshire, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire, and Oxfordshire. So uh, very often they have this element Shire, for example like Hampshire, Buckinghamshire. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, in a little moment. Let us now go um, um, one by one through each of these counties, uh, perhaps with a few uh, photographs and uh, what these counties can be remembered for. So the first one um, situated nearest to continental Europe is Kent. 
second, sometimes called the Garden of England. Uh, this is the place with orchards, this is the place with uh, uh, quite uh, a long tradition of, um, of fruit production, especially apples that would be used for different things, but mostly for cider. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, regional foods, of course, later on. Uh, but uh, just to give you an idea, this, this image of, uh, of um, apples growing in the, uh, in the tree. Each of the counties have their own symbols, they have their own flags. I'm putting them uh, here uh, for, you, uh, for you to see. So if you, if you see them somewhere, they, they refer to the local identity, to the local history. Uh, so here we have um, Kent and this uh, uh, standing horse, the, the stallion white horse on red uh, background. The uh, most important uh, cities and towns are also enumerated. So here in Kent, definitely the most important city is Canterbury. Um, Canterbury, which is uh, known mostly for its um, uh, for its cathedral and other medieval uh, medieval um, relics. Um, we will talk about uh, this place again when we talk about the UNESCO sites uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in England because definitely this is one of the UNESCO sites. This is a place full of beauty and history and even literary connections if you remember murder in the cathedral and the whole story of uh, of um, uh, Thomas Beckett uh, uh, the archbishop murdered by the knights of uh, King Henry the, uh, the second uh, so here we have Canterbury we also have um, the white, <clears throat> the white cliffs, and uh, of course the <clears throat> the town of Dover, uh, being um, an important place, an important port. <clears throat> if you ever travelled from uh, from France by uh, by ferry, this is one of the places that the ferries uh, land, and uh, <clears throat> another very uh, very. Um, well-known geographical feature, not only in Kent, but um, probably the, the, the part in Kent is most, uh, most well-known, is the White Cliffs, the chalk uh, cliffs that can be uh, visible from, uh, from um, the sea. As you approach England, this is one of the uh, places uh, that um, gave uh, this land its name. Albion, so the Romans when they approached England they came um, from uh, from the channel of course and they uh, they uh, could see the white chalk cliffs um, and white in Latin is Albus so they called this land the white land so Albion. Uh, what else? Uh, there was a song uh, in the around the time of the of the Second World War, um, White Cliffs of Dover, a kind of patriotic song, um, trying to convince the people that uh, that everything will be turning for the better, and and uh, there will be birds flying over the White Cliffs of Dover. So uh, that's Kent. Next. County, the county without direct access to the sea is Surrey, right uh, to the uh, to the south of Greater London, one of the richer counties in England. Uh, traditionally, the place of um, of uh, aristocratic and even royal connections. Um, uh, with some uh, some traditions uh, surviving even today, uh, the main uh, the main places, the main towns: uh, Guildford, Runnymede, Epsom Downs, Racecourse. Uh, Racecourse. Guildford is an old uh, town with some uh, some uh, monuments and relics of its own. I visited it once. Uh, uh, for a conference, it's quite interesting. Probably the most 
interesting part is this Abbott's Hospital. This is uh, um, uh, an old almshouse rather than a hospital, so uh, uh, a kind of uh, shelter for um, for the worthy poor, like the uh, the military veterans, perhaps uh, they didn't really understand hospital uh, the way that uh, that we do now as the place of uh, of medicine, the place of uh, of uh, healing. It was rather a kind of quiet, safe place for the older people of moderate means uh, to live out their lives. Uh, what is a Ranimede famous for? This is a, um, a place on the River Thames and it is known for its connection with one of the most uh, important documents in, uh, in English history, the Magna Carta. So this was a document that uh, King John, King John the Lackland, was forced to sign by his uh, nobles, uh, by his barons. Uh, this was the first uh, um, document uh, to, uh, to secure um, some sort of um, check up on the uh, on the power of the monarch on the power of the king the first limitation of the power of the king and uh, it was uh, it was signed uh, in june 1215 so june 1215 and uh, for the um uh, for the um anniversary for the centenary uh, of uh, of this event uh, a special memorial was constructed quite an interesting place in its own right with some unexpected connections uh, like the connections with american presidents google it so um why would american presidents be interested in the magna carta uh, so uh, that's um, that's one thing and the third thing here is uh, Epsom Downs this is the race co course so the place where horse racing is uh, is organized and this is the uh, the place of one of those uh, aristocratic traditions going back for a few hundreds of years uh, Derby Day Derby Day is a special event a special uh, a special um, um, horse racing event uh, uh, which uh, houses or which uh, uh, which uh, um, uh, gathers uh, the fashionable society and uh, uh, the most characteristic thing that happens is ladies wearing very elaborate and sometimes extravagant hats and there is always a big coverage in the press uh, and uh, you have all those uh, um, socialites and minor royals uh, um, appearing there and posing with new extravagant hats so that's it that's uh that's sorry in a in a nutshell there are lots of palaces there are lots of uh, places connected with uh, uh with the uh, noble houses uh, so um we'll probably return to that uh, but uh, this is just to give you the idea the next county is sussex which has been divided into two parts they share a flag, so I give it only once. East Sussex and West Sussex. All those sexy names, they come from the Saxons, really. So it's like the land of Southern Saxons. Uh, we'll talk about the historical maps, but uh, I, you may um, imagine that uh, this was the area where the Anglo-Saxon tribes, Germanic tribes, uh, uh, came uh, in the early Middle Ages and uh, this is this is where they settled. So here we have, uh, um, here we have uh, um, Sussex, meaning Southern Saxons, Southern Saxon land. 
what interesting parts uh, can be situated in East Sussex? Things like Gatwick Airport. I told you uh, last week that uh, um, the main airports of, of London are mostly situated uh, beyond the, uh, the uh, borders of Greater London. This is one of them, Gatwick Airport in East Sussex. And then we have some interesting towns of Brighton, Eastburn, Hastings and Rye. Um, Hastings, everybody knows Hastings, the Battle of Hastings. Uh, what uh, we can find there is um, a medieval abbey that was built to commemorate the battle, to uh, to bury some of the uh, some of the knights who were killed in this battle. Uh, the name of the abbey is quite appropriately uh, Battle Abbey. Uh, of course, it refers to the Battle of Hastings, 1066. This is one of those dates that everybody remembers. Uh, Eastburn is uh, uh, one of the one of the places uh, that became popular in the 19th century with the growing popularity of uh, seaside holidays sussex is relatively near london and especially when the tra when the train line was built uh, people from london could uh, relatively easily travel to one of the warmest parts of the uh, of the english coast that is the uh, the coast uh, in the english channel uh, and places like eastbourne started to develop so uh, they also have uh, some parts of those white cliffs so it's not only dover it's um, in a few places in the in south of uh, of england uh, so you would have uh, places like Piers, for example very popular uh, especially in the 19th century so those kind of um walkways extending into the sea but there was before eastbourne one more fashionable holiday place for the rich and famous and royal rich and royal really um, in the uh, late uh, 18th century and at the turn of the 19th century the period called Regency so before the accession of Queen Victoria uh, when her, uh, her uncle George IV ruled as Prince Regent in the uh, in the name of his father George III and he built in Brighton a splendid palace a holiday palace called Bri Royal, the Royal Pavilion Brighton Pavilion the Royal Pavilion in Brighton uh, as you can see here in the in the photograph uh, uh, it is very extravagant from the outside it looks like something Indian a little bit like Taj Mahal perhaps from the inside because I visited there and I strongly recommend that you do it uh, whenever you have the chance uh, the inside is more Chinese so it's all gold and red and dragons so absolute folly this was an extravagant palace to hold the parties and prince regent knew how to hold a party uh, he would invite his uh, guests uh, and uh, uh, he employed the best chefs that were available mostly french chefs that started uh, migrating to uh, to britain after the french revolution and even the kitchens in the royal pavilion were splendid so the prince could invite his guests over to the kitchen to see how those sumptuous dishes were made he was a big gourmand some say glutton really he was quite overweight especially um towards the end of his life but the uh, the pavilion the palace is absolutely splendid uh, we move to west sussex now and uh, uh, the main uh, the main city here is chichester uh, here we have a victorian um 
a Victorian folly really with the, uh, uh, with the clock, so kind of decorative element uh, in the center of the city. Uh, another uh, important historical monument is not a city or, or a town, it's a castle, Arundel Castle, one of the best preserved uh, castles in, uh, in England. Uh, it, uh, um, I think it's still an inhabitable uh, condition, so yes, there are some people who live in castles still. Uh, what is quite um, popular in England generally, we'll probably talk about it at some later stage, uh, but uh, uh, it's good to mention it now. Uh, the great national passion for uh, for uh, walking, for hiking and generally um, enjoying the outdoors. And we have a lot of protected countryside, especially ar along the coast with a lot of walking lines and, uh, and beautiful, um, beautiful uh, landscapes. And this has been uh, appreciated uh, at least uh, since, uh, since um, I would say, late 19th century. Uh, so what we have here are um, beautiful picturesque hills um, uh, called Downs and, uh, uh, and uh, there are lots of um, walking trails, uh, sometimes going for many, uh, for many miles and uh, that's what, uh, uh, what people like doing. Uh, we move now a little bit off the coast of, uh, of um, Great Britain to the Isle of Wight, so a small island uh, situated in the English Channel, divided from Great Britain by a strait called Solent Strait and uh, there are um, two really important uh, elements here. One is the town of Cows, not spend, uh, spelled like the animals but like, uh, as you can see here, which is quite famous for a sailing regatta. So they have like the whole week, it's called Cows Week, where um, the uh, sailing boats from basically all over the world uh, come and compete in the regatta in the Solent. The other claim to fame, a beautiful place uh, which I uh, had a, a great pleasure to visit was Osborne House, so the summer residence of the royal family uh, built for Queen Victoria. This was her favorite uh, summer palace. Uh, she uh, spent uh, a lot of time there with uh, her husband, Prince Albert, who was actually one of the people involved in designing this uh, palace or rather kind of grand villa in what could be seen as a kind of Italian -ed style, uh, situated in a big garden uh, and their nine children. Uh, there are lots of interesting features in the garden, for example, a little, uh, a little chalet, so a kind of Swiss uh, mountain hut or house. Uh, that used to uh, belong to the children. This, this used to be the place where the children could play and learn some things like cooking for example or gardening. They had the little plots of, uh, of the garden uh, for each of the nine princes and princesses and uh, uh, they would grow some vegetables and then uh, uh, try to cook something using them. So that's, that's quite interesting. Uh, Queen Victoria had her own beach there with a um, very funny thing called a bathing machine, so a kind of uh, changing hat on uh, on wheels, so she could put on her um, her bathing costume. Of course, not a bikini, not discovered yet, but a more covering bathing costume. So this is this is on the Isle of Wight. Um, then we move back uh, to, the, uh, to the mainland of Great Britain, uh, to the county of Hampshire. Hampshire with uh, the cities of Winchester, Portsmouth, 
Southampton, uh, so uh, quite important uh, places. Winchester was one of the uh, very important uh, places in uh, uh, in uh, the medieval period, in the Anglo-Saxon period. This was actually uh, one of the capital cities of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. We'll talk about them at a later stage. Uh, so um, what we have is a, a beautiful cathedral uh, with some important people buried there, um, like Jane Austen, for example, and uh, uh, the castle, which boasts, among other things, the original, what I would say in, adver in inverted commas, the original um, round table that used to belong to King Arthur. No, it's medieval, of course, but that's what they say. Uh, Southampton and uh, Portsmouth are important uh, ports, especially Portsmouth, uh, which is just opposite the Isle of Wight, is one of the most important uh, uh, sea ports in Britain uh, with um, a great uh, military base, naval base, uh, um, so that's that's a very important uh, place for for the m naval power of Britain and for anyone uh, interested in ships and sea. We move a little bit further away from the sea to the county of Berkshire and here we have some more interesting uh, interesting places, Windsor, Eton, and Reading. It's not sp uh, it's not read reading. It's not about reading. It's Reading. So Windsor Castle, absolutely one of the main residences um, of the Queen. Uh, it's in the county of Berkshire, near London, but not within um, the uh, Greater London area. Uh, Eton, which is a town just across the River Thames from, uh, from Windsor, houses one of the most famous public schools, so secondary schools for boys from the elite. It is uh, one of the places that traditionally um, instructed teenage boys from the age of around 13 uh, in all kinds of academic subjects, so they would go to Oxford and Cambridge colleges uh, to the university later on. Uh, one of the interesting places that happens in Berkshire on the River Thames is a tradition uh, of swan upping. So each year they count and uh, number the swans that live on the River Thames, because according to the law, all swans belong to the Queen, and she's the only one who can eat them. I'm not sure that the uh, uh, royal household uh, continues to eat the swans, but uh, historically they could, and uh, that is why the swans had to be controlled and counted uh, each, uh, each year. So uh, we continue in a moment. 